Hello guys, welcome back to another reaction video here on Our Eyes Your Eyes. I'm ready to watch episode 21 of Steins Gate season 1. But before starting this video, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, leave a like to support me and join me in this super amazing, incredible adventure. Okay, in the previous episode we discovered a lot. We discovered that Mr. Brown was not the Mr. Brown we knew <laughs> and we discovered that now Kyoma has to make a decision, an important decision, or he has to find another way to solve everything anyway. Let's see what's going to happen. Are you ready to join me with this? Check it out. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's a heavy burden for him. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Again. Uh, How can he explain you with something like this? Uh, it's a hard oh, oh guys you're asking too much for this person uh, he is a person uh, ah, and he has to handle everything by himself uh, even if uh, he has to remember that Kurisa said you are not alone let's see if it's happening How many times did she die? Yeah. 
Cristina! <laughs> Oh my, he is going to die. Oh no! No, she's going to come and save you. I'm pretty sure. Oh no, I told you! I told you! No, no. No, 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 no. Again. No, you can't. I, I can't handle it anymore because it's too many times. He's crying, right? Oh, no, no. I thought that he was crying. At this time, it's crazy. Again, <laughs> look at I told you he was reaching a point in which uh, there was a limit. Uh. Again! Oh my! Yeah, but how many times he has to open this scar of him from his heart? Yeah. Yeah.
Ah, he was crying. Yes. Yes. Ah, he, she was a stab. Okay, I'll, so I made a mistake. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You would not understand. It's hard. Maybe they represent reality. Uh, mm, they are not a dream, so you experience them for real. It's a happening.
<laughs> yeah. Emma, he felt your presence. That's why he's doing everything to save you. Because you were the number one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You got it right. Yes, I think she deserves to know. Yes, I want to know who stabbed her. She is remembering something, maybe. Okay, another episode finished. Uh, unfortunately, no matter how much Kyoma is trying to rescue Mayuri, there is not a chance that he can prevent uh, her death. And this is pretty sad because definitely Kyoma is trying all ways possible to do something like this, but he can't. He actually can't. So I think that that's because we are talking about this specific world line and that's why if he is able to switch this world line with the other one then actually he can save Mayuri but as we were saying many times and as he was confirming to Chris in this episode Kyoma has to decide in the case he wants to save Mayuri, we have to switch back to the original path, the original world line in which Chris is dead. If he wants to save Chris, it means that he has to stay in this world line and save her instead of Mayuri. And for him is a great decision to make because I don't think that he can prevent both. I mean, he can't prevent... Uh, Chris's death and Mayuri's death contemporarily. I think that he has to choose. And that's pretty hard because even if uh, Chris jumped uh, right into his life uh, recently, he was having a right shoulder all the times and he was reaching the level he reached of knowledge thanks to her. Especially because when he was feeling the most hopeless man in the world, Chris was there to help him. While uh, I imagine, I understand the pain he can feel in the case of Mayuri is dead. Because Mayuri 
even if she thinks that she's useless, that she's not useful in these moments, or if she feels that right now Kyoma is distant, yes, he is, but he has a great reason why he is distant. Because if he is spending lots of time with her, then it means that she's going to die and he has to accept her death. If she is not included in some conversations and if he is distant, it's because he is just busy, because he has to find a way to save her. But of course, from Mayuri's perspective, she thinks that Kyoma right now is no more interested in her and she feels as if now her time is gone. She's wrong. <laughs> Actually, I can understand her point of view. I think that all of us could have felt the same in the case she was feeling something like this. But to be honest, I think that Mayuri doesn't have to think something like this because Kyoma has eyes for Mayuri only. I mean, throughout all this time, no matter if he was having a great relationship with Chris, and even if he feels so sad because of what I told you already, the fact that he sacrificed the desires of all the others, and now it seems that these sacrifices were mere, they were nothing, because as soon as we are approaching the end of this first season, he has to make a choice. He has to save one of them. It means that no matter what's going to happen, these sacrifices were meaningless. And it's even more painful because he can't save both. And that's the worst thing that can happen. Now we have to see if Kyoma has the right courage to decide one of the two, or he is just a laying on the ground and let all these events uh, passing through him. I think that no matter if he is laying on the ground or no matter if it's acting or choosing something, he is going to lose one of the two. So at this point it's better to choose instead of doing anything. What do you think? Let's see, never say never because this story can change drastically. I mean, <laughs> It can turn upside down everything that we saw so far, so we shouldn't be so sad for the moment. But it was pretty sad, <laughs> the moment in which Mayuri was confronting her grandma who passed away, and she was already saying that she's having these bad dreams. So, as you can see, no matter how much you can alternate the reality, you can remake it, rewrite it, uh, call it uh, how much you want. But these things are anyway affecting the person, no matter what. So you can see that Mayuri is having these nightmares that are pretty terrible. And these nightmares actually are like as if they are realities from other dimensions jumping into this dimension while she's uh, dreaming. So anyway, she's affected by these dreams, bad dreams, and this makes you understand that no matter how much you can try to change this reality you're living in, somehow that reality you want to change is coming back to the source in other ways. And that's why Kyoma feels even more painful, because he is listening while she's talking to her grandma, and he understands that no matter what he is trying to do, because he's trying to change things for better, anyway, he's causing a pain to her. And this is uh, even worse for him, because no matter how much he's trying to do th good things, uh, the result is that he is trying to do bad things on her. I really like the fact that Kyoma said, one day I will explain you everything. And I think she deserves to know, as much as Chris knew that uh, if we go back in time uh, and if we erase or modify even the first email, she's going to die. I think that even Mayuri needs to know what it's going on, because she understood already that something is strange, that there is something wrong, and for this reason, definitely, she needs to know. 
maybe Kyoma is afraid to tell her something because maybe Mayuri doesn't want her to survive. Maybe Mayuri says that she is ready to accept her fate and he also has to do so. So I think that Kyoma maybe is afraid of the reaction Mayuri can have because he knows that Mayuri is not like a common person. I mean, I think that Kyoma feels as if uh, Mayuri is a special person to him. Special not just because he cares about her, but because he knows that she is having another perspective of life sometimes that he doesn't have. And maybe he is afraid to hear, oh, okay, if that's my fate, if that's my destiny, please don't try to change it. Please let me die because that's how it is supposed to be and try to accept it. But we know that Mayuri has this uh, motherly instinct, uh, protective instinct towards other people. So maybe she doesn't want that Chris is going to die and she prefers to die instead. Anyway, we still have to understand who stabbed Chris. Because uh, even uh, Kyoma said that she was stabbed. So maybe I just uh, forgot this detail or maybe I didn't read it. Uh, I mean, I don't know why I thought that that was just an accident. Maybe. Or maybe now nobody explained us this. And that's why I was convinced uh, that that was just an accident due to the arrival of uh, uh, Suzu-chan. But we definitely needed to understand who stabbed her, why she was stabbed, was it just an accident? I mean, was she stabbed because it was well planned already? Or because it was a mere accident? Everything depends on who stabbed her. Was Moeka stabbing her? Was Suzu-chan stabbing her? I mean, we need to understand what's going on here because it all depends on this detail, I guess. But if Chris is stabbed on purpose because of something she has discovered, because of uh, something that was happening that we don't know, then things are different. Uh, so let's see what's going to happen uh, with the Kyoma and all the others. Let's see if uh, he can find a compromise. Because, yeah, when he was uh, trying to kill himself, uh, to change things and maybe to save Mayuri, save Chris, uh, I mean, he was trying everything he could. But as you can see, it's like as if no matter how much you try to modify your destiny, you can't because it's already written. And this attempt to rewrite it could be propositive at the beginning because you see that everything changed actually. But then something else is going to happen that makes you understand that you are powerless and destiny is written already and we just have to face it no matter the consequences. Let's see. Never say never in this story. See you next week with episode 22 of Steins Gate. In the meantime, feel free to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Bye, guys. See you in the next video.